Welcome to the final episode of Series 10. We are in the middle of Con Drop Something Fierce, so we're going to try to keep this brief. First up, we recorded our recap of a catacon. We did it in the car. We did it in the car. It was the, good. The recording. The recording. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's wife was there. It was weird. <laughs> Um, oh my. Oh, yikes. Um, <laughs> yes, we recorded our recap in the car, um, and we decided that instead of a normal character evolution cast episode, we are going to release our recap audio next week so we can give ourselves a little bit of recovery period, yeah. uh, both because of Con Drop and Thanksgiving and also my birthday. Amelia's birthday. My birthday. Um, but then we'll be picking right back up with Series 11 the following week. Hooray. And secondly, if you haven't heard Amelia's bonus content that she just recently released on the One Shot Secret Archive, you should definitely check that out. Uh, there is cuteness galore in that episode. And, and then send me your feedback because Nate asks me every day what the people on Twitter are saying yes. about him. So let Nate know. Uh-huh, 100%. <laughs> and if you do not have access, you can get access to the feed by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash one-shot podcast. Folks, we are officially out of reviews. Sad tears. It's sad tears. But we do want to say a huge thank you to everyone who said hi to us or came to our panel or played games with us over this past weekend when we were at a catacon. Mm-hmm. It was an absolutely amazing time, and we were honestly really overwhelmed by the reception we got from all of the wonderful people that we were able to meet up with there. Yeah, it was, it was just remarkable. Uh, it was such a wonderful time with all of you. Um, and I got my first autograph request. I know. I did, too. I, I was know. very excited about that, but um, also yeah. uh, real awkward. Like, who? Me? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but I did remember <laughs> to sign me. the correct name, so that was really big for me. That's awesome. It was like, yes, I get to like sign my real name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. I know. So listen up next week to our wonderful recap, and since we're both feeling that con drop, we're going to leave it at that. But please check out the show notes and see where you can leave us reviews so we can read your wonderful words and get all giddy and stuff. We need to have feels. We need to have feels. Please give us feels. <laughs> exactly. All right. Enjoy the show. Back to our discussion episode. Last time we created a group of characters for Traveler. This episode we will be discussing the character creation process. We are very excited to welcome back Ryan of Shadow of the Cabal podcast. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself again, Ryan, for everyone at home and tell us a little bit about the character you made in our last episode? Hey, I'm Ryan from Shadow of the Cabal, the Prime Sauce on Twitter. And in our last episode, I created the character Zach Davey who is a, uh, a kid who went into a life of crime very early, messed up in that life of crime, and eventually switched out and tried to make a little bit better life for himself by getting a more legitimate job as a courier. All right. Other Ryan, do you want to tell us about your character? Yeah, my character's name was Shiara, and uh, she graduated from university, had high hopes of becoming a uh, field like explorer. What was it? researcher a field scholar field researcher and uh she kind of may have caused an accident or may have brought the heat down on a particular uh psionic group that she was trying to study and got kicked out of that career and from there she tried to go back into her entertainment roots and failed miserably eventually ending up as a drifter but at least she had a partner in crime, 
which was Amelia's character. Yeah, I made Campbell Croft. Campbell went to university and then they failed out (laughs) and decided to go backpacking across space Europe and then eventually settled into a life as a, let's say, merchant. I would say (laughs) maybe more black market kind of, you know, not entirely legal. Um, And now is hanging out with this group of losers. (laughs) You love us. Do, I do. Mm -hmm. Amelia and the Ryans. Our new (laughs) band, you guys. That's amazing. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into our segment we're calling D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. In this segment, we want to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how this system feels compared to others. But first, we'd like to ask each of our guests, whenever we talk to them, how they got into role-playing games in the first place. So, Ryan, how did you get into role-playing games in the first place? I was in fifth grade, and I remember walking to my I, I walking to grade school. And I saw a friend of mine sitting on the ground reading a book that had really cool pictures of, like, wizards and stuff on it. So I asked him about it. It was his older brother's second edition D&D player's handbook. And instantly I wanted to try it out when he described it to me. And we went over to his house that after school that day. And his brother ran a game for us. And I've been playing ever since. That's so cool. (laughs) You just, like, found somebody right away. You're like, I got this book. I know what it is. Like, that's, that is a rare story where all of the pieces fit together right away. Yeah. The, I mean, the guy was he, was, he was my friend since as early as I can remember. But, you know, his, it was one of those, his older brother was too cool for us or whatever. But I, I saw it, his brother let him borrow the book and he was reading it at school. And I thought it looked really cool. And we both got his brother to pl- run it for us. And then it was like two weeks later that I tried running my own game and it was terrible. But, but I tried. <laughs> a for effort. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) when you make characters in any game do you have a specific way that you kind of like to go about it do you have a general pattern when you do it or do you just kind of do whatever it really seems that i I tend to make characters that have pretty terrible lives you do love a good (laughs) sad boy (laughs) Uh, it's not even just necessarily about being a bad boy i like characters that have bad things that they're trying to work out of Things that are bad in their past, and the story is the process of getting somewhere better. Kind of a uh, redemption sort of story there. Yeah. Yeah. Or either redemption or just acceptance. Something. Oh, okay. Overcoming whatever it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's normally what I go for in whatever I'm making. Yeah, I feel like... Very cool. I mean, we've played together a few times, and I feel like Mm -hmm. we give you crap all the time for... Just being horrible to your characters. <laughs> um, but but in my mind, I'm doing that to give them more and more upward mobility. That's fair. You can't you can't go up unless you're yeah. I, already down. I, it may not seem like it, but I always want my character to end up higher, better than they were. Really? Because as someone who had to read that epilogue <laughs> for Shadow of the Cabal. I, I, that was not where I was aiming, but it felt so right it did it did that was the correct like we won't ruin it because ryan maybe at some point will listen to it Um, (laughs) i will definitely listen to it uh yeah Yeah, you've already had half of the cast of the first campaign on here (laughs) it's true um no justin's on every episode i don't know what you're talking about oh yeah yeah i forgot he's been on every episode right here justin (laughs) yeah no i feel like you you do have a tendency to do that but for the most part they're not they're not so tragic they're, it's uh, yeah. They're okay. I mean, and and a lot of times it's of their own making to some degree. I'm sure that's me working out my own stuff. But that's <laughs> I like that in role playing games. I like being able to mess around with those kinds of really yeah. complex and not entirely fun emotional spaces. Yeah, like that's one of the cool things that RPGs can do. So then we come to a game like Traveler. Where it's hard to kind of rein in what you wanted for your character from the start. Mm. So how do we think character creation in this game stacks up to other systems that we've played? It's definitely a lot more random. 
there you know you yeah. you have a lot less say in the character but you still have a lot of say there's still a lot of places you know even mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. a lot of the events and mishaps are you know do you do this or do you do this and that's true you know and you pick your career you may, you might not get it but you're trying for something mm-hmm. and i felt like we were able to flavor a lot of it like a yeah. lot of those roles were still pretty broad yeah yeah, I I really liked how this feels more like a simulator for a real individual's life. Yeah, yeah. Rather than I'm picking this and maybe rolling to see how good it is or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's it it's definitely a tool. You know, when you're making a character in D and D or something, you have very little to give you much as far as help in making that character's backstory you have to go completely on your own why are they adventuring what were they like before they did this you know fifth edition's a little bit better with the backgrounds and everything but yeah but even those are like more like flavor and tone than really mm-hmm. like background like they don't tell yeah. you anything about who you were before you started doing this yeah and then mm-hmm. th- and the life path system it it forces you you have no choice you have a backstory mm-hmm. you know it, it might not be exactly the backstory you were hoping for, but you have one. Yeah, and I I think the only thing I didn't like about it is it has to be four year chunks yeah. of time. Yeah. It that feels a little restricting, but I, I get it. I understand why they did it. Right. Um and the way we did it is we made it so we all did the same amount of uh terms, but is, am I understanding it correctly where you can actually have different people doing different amounts of terms and then starting the game at different ages? Yeah. So the the last time that I ran this game several months ago, I, I want to say we had one character who did seven terms and another who did, I think, five. And I, I don't remember everybody else, but that, I think that was the biggest discrepancy was was two terms apart, which... The difficulty with that is then, when we were doing this, it was really easy to line up when we were doing our connections, what happened every term. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if somebody did seven terms and somebody did five terms, well, that person's fifth term is this person's seventh term. So now we have to work back and line everything up. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And so that that adds a little bit of paperwork. And it's, it's not wrong. It's not the wrong way to do it, but it's definitely not the easy way to do it. So I thought so that it, those connections were like a little bit looser, though, that we were kind of able to say a little more like when we felt like it fit. So mm-hmm. can you just kind of fudge that a little bit or does that have you to can. be? You can. You can. I mean, it's it's it kind of depends on how strict you want to go. Like we we did some fudging, but at the same time for for Zach and Chiara, like the second term, we both of our events mm-hmm. lined up. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. It was during that four-year period of time that exactly. this thing yeah. happened. And it could have been anywhere in that four-year chunk. Yeah, that makes sense. And it seems like this game, compared to other games, there is a lot more of those sorts of small little details to keep track of during yes. character creation. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to ask you, co-host Ryan, yes. because I haven't played a lot of Palladium games, like any at mm-hmm. all. Isn't mm-hmm. there a lot of like random rolling in there too? Well, in yes and no. In a lot of the Palladium games, I'm I'm thinking specifically Heroes Unlimited, and uh, when we get around to covering this, which I hope we do soon. Um, oh, I know. I really want Jeff actually, and John. I think that they said yeah. they were going to, right? I think, yeah, yeah. I think so. And you can actually create a character, I believe, from scratch, completely random. In terms of stats and your class, your education, all that sort of stuff. I think you might still pick your skills. Okay. But you can do all sorts of... Uh, there's just tons of random tables. But you don't have to do random in everything. You don't have to randomize your superpowers. Oh, okay. Like so you have the option to do it either way. Yes. Okay. I was just wondering um, how this compared I, to another game that has a lot of random tables. Because like D&D has a couple mm-hmm. here and there, but... Like not yeah, and, really. And Xanathar's Guide adds a lot mm-hmm. to the backstory sort of stuff for your characters with a ton of different random tables, which is really cool. But those are all optional. All optional. Yeah, and L five R has what heritage tables, and that's it. 
More They're so less, real yeah. good. I <laughs> do, do you do you just do you just bad mouth L five R in every no every... so but like that's the thing that Ryan and I always kind of go back to is like he always goes back to Heroes Unlimited because that's like his yeah. game and L five R is yeah. like my game and yeah. so yeah I mean I I'm contractually <laughs> obligated to reference it at least once an episode that so. that makes yeah. sense yeah. and I, I am too until we actually cover the system yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, I mean, this one does require those random tables. So, I guess that does make it a little bit different in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely not optional here. Do you find that frustrating, like, when you play this game a lot? Or is it – that's just something that you know going in and you just kind of work with it? I think I think it's really fun. I think character creation for this is really fun. Mm-hmm. That's part of the reason that I, I threw this out here right away when you mm-hmm. first started talking about yeah. the co- podcast. Yeah, you were like, oh, because, I have the game for you. <laughs> yeah, because I think out of every game that I've played, this is the most fun experience I've had in creating a character. I do think that in-game, it does create some imbalances that can cause some issues. Yeah, I can see that. Do you think it creates some, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, dissatisfaction or, like, distance from your character, too, that you just don't feel really attached. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh. I'm kind of feeling that. With my <laughs> I, I mean, I had, obviously, a vision going in, mm-hmm. like, you know, if, if everything lined up, I want to do this and this and this, and that'd be really cool if I got there. That'd be great. Yeah. But then it was just like, oh, you failed at this. Well, crud. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, now what? Okay. I got to try something else. Well, you failed at that too. Now you're even more down and out and more out of your plans. I think after playing a little bit, I would probably get more into the character. Right. Right. But um, it coming fresh off of it, it feels you don't feel little, super passionate uh, about it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel a little disappointed, mm-hmm. but um, but. When we created the connections, I think I got a little bit more into it. Yeah. And that's... So, the last time that I ran this, two of the characters, one of them, when he was rolling, he just did excellent. The whole way through, the character got to the top rank in the Navy. I, I, wow. don't, I don't remember what it was. And, like, he he went all the way to the top, and then he ended up doing one extra term as, like, a noble, just as as his character kind of putzing around and, like... In his retirement. That's the one who I think went to seven terms. Wow. Another person tr- was dead set. He wanted his character to be a scientist. Failed out of college. I don't care. I'm going to go into the scientist thing. Got in. Fa- screwed up. It, it, he just constantly was failing throughout the entire thing. And, yeah. and I could tell when running the game that because his character was not what he wanted, he wasn't having as much fun. Yeah. And I think I think part of that, though, is... This was the first time any of them had played Traveler. Mm-hmm. They're okay. used to coming in and being able to say, this is the character I'm going to play, and I will now build that character. Yep. In Traveler, you have to kind of come in with the mindset of, this is a very broad idea. Let's see what happens. It's, it's more like a, this is my character's aspirations yeah. in life. Yeah. Let's see if they come true. Exactly. Yeah, when I was looking through stuff earlier today... The closest to a concept that I bothered to come up with was scientist, like book smart person with no practical skills. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is not what I ended up with at all. I ended up with somebody who failed out of university and plenty of practical skills and, you know, did just fine. <laughs> but it's, yeah, having anything tighter than that probably would have led to some disappointment. And I think yeah. the sense that I get is that you have to have a group that's really willing to buy into that and Mm -hmm. like from the beginning say i'm gonna be fine with whatever i get i don't care if it's not great we're just gonna roll with it Mm because i think anything more than that yeah is gonna lead to those kind of grumpy feelings yeah and i think i read in the book somewhere it said you're you're playing ordinary people thrown into extraordinary situations yeah yeah the your characters in this are generally not the biggest the strongest the best 
the mo- the be- most well funded. You're not that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's you're you're trying to make do as best you can, at, you know, together, working together mm-hmm. to try to overcome and just survive. Do you think that the mechanics of character creation kind of tell players what to expect when they're playing this game, or are they? I mean, it felt like its own mini game. It it really does. I I think there's maybe some small degree of showing people things in that there are failures in the game. Mm-hmm. Failures yeah. have consequences. If you get into a fight, if you're not ready to to win that fight, you f- fights are deadly in this game. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a lot of like the this game is not going to go easy on you, and I think that there's right. an indication of that in the character creation. Yeah, I, I can kind of see that, and I can also see. From a more uh, mechanical aspect of character creation, spreadsheets and tables mm-hmm. probably play a lot in actually playing the game, too. Absolutely. Yeah, there's like a lot um, of resource management going on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure we can find online somewhere the, the page that shows the ship that our, our crew has. And there's a lot of things in there that are important to know. For especially if we're doing a trading thing, you know, we need to know what our cargo space is. We need to know how much it costs per month for us to be going places. We need mm-hmm. to, we need to know how much fuel we have have to use. All of that stuff. Wow. Oh yeah, there's a spot right on your character sheet for debt, living cost, monthly ship payments. Yep. Uh huh. All that's right out right out on the front. Yep. Yeah. Could even have a pension too. Yeah. Yes. If if you got high enough. Uh, or if you did enough terms in any one career, you get a pension. In in that example I gave from the last game I ran, the military guy, he had a pretty nice pension. The other right. guy, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, most of character creation is, is pretty random, though. And play, yeah. I'm sure, is not nearly as... No, the, the base dice rolling mechanic is pretty much what you guys have already experienced. It's 2d6 plus modifiers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. normal target number for like an average difficulty is about eight okay but you know so for my character with his i think two in pilot spacecraft mm-hmm. usually it's it would be two from pilot spacecraft and then maybe maybe we're looking at something dexterity based so i'd get to add my plus one from dexterity so that's plus three i need a five okay. to get that on mm-hmm. two dice that's not really that hard yeah right yeah, so and I saw some examples and some of the skills, like a really hard skill was like 14 or something like yeah, that, yeah. which you have to have bonuses to even it, hope to get to. Right. That's yeah, interesting. No, you know, there, there, there's, you guys have seen kind of the, the, the rules and how they work, but it's, if your character is built specifically around a certain thing, you're probably going to be fine with it. Yeah. Right. You just got to make sure that and, whatever you randomly end up with is <laughs> what you're but, doing. <laughs> but it does, it does, the system still does give you some ways to m- mitigate the randomness a little bit. Oh, you yeah. know, we, we, we had the connections where we got two skill points from that. Yeah. And we I had the gotten, package or whatever, whatever they Yeah. Called. I could have gotten mm-hmm. my piloting all the way up to three fr- using our, our connections if I wanted to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, that's true. And so, like, I, if, if I was dead set, I want to be a pilot. That is what I want my character to be. I can still do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then how does the the process of character creation set us up as players for playing the system? Does it set our expectations at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I think kind of as you said before, there's the, you kind of are coming into this expecting a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of, you know, we need to keep track of all of this stuff. And I think the character creation kind of gives you an idea of that's the sort of game this is with mm-hmm. all of the the different things we need to look at. Yeah, even and, just the amount of charts and tables. Like, even though we yeah. weren't necessarily keeping track of all of those things in creation, it was pretty clear just from, like, mm-hmm. the number yeah. of, okay, now go over to this table on this page. And this, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, this, yeah, it's that kind of game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I think another big factor of this game, like I said, is you guys, ha- we, we have to work together in this game. Like, we have to work together. And that's, I think, that having those connections helps kind of put that in your head that Mm -hmm. we have to be together. We have to have reasons to be together and to want to work together. Yeah. And that's a thing that a lot of modern game design has kind of pulled forward is, I mean, that's a thing that you see all the time in all of those PBTA games too, is like, what are those connections with people? And more and more games I think are kind of forcing you to do that. 
yeah. like a collaborative well, session zero. Exactly, mm -hmm. which is which is great. I love that. Yeah, so that's kind of a cool thing to see in a game that's been around for this long, and that where most of yeah. the design mechanics are very much Still pretty old archaic. School. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of yeah. cool to see like that's a thing that we've adopted in a lot of modern game design that like has been there all along in yeah. some form. <laughs> Maybe it's just buried underneath <laughs> all of the charts, and we couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now this is a thing that we've been talking about for a while, but let's pick the biggest one mm. flaws of character creation in the system <laughs> we've, we've talked it, a lot about flaws in this system but yeah i would i would say the biggest flaw kind of depends on what you're going into it wanting mm -hmm. to a lot of people the randomness is the biggest flaw yeah i get it i I, I would yeah i would say going into the system knowing what the system is mm -hmm. The biggest flaw is the layout of the book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree with you on that yeah, one. Flipping back and forth is a pain. Yeah. It really is, yeah. especially when you're working off of a PDF. Yeah. Yeah, man, just like put links in the PDF so I can click them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, to me, I, I think one of the biggest flaws, and it might seem trivial, rolling for your characteristics at the very beginning. Oh. I, I, I think having a more set starting point just feels better for me like most games anymore seem to have gotten away from you know used to be in D D, you roll the six siders to get your attributes oh you know? okay so you're saying like yeah. have yeah okay H how we did the 2d6 six times that whole thing so would you want like a standard array then or would you want just like like in in l5r um where everything starts at the same level for everybody like everything's a two or maybe or maybe like a point by system yeah i would i would like a standard array or a point by one of the two i i probably would prefer a point by personally but you know gives you a little bit more variability mm -hmm. but i <laughs> that sounds like math <laughs> that's that sounds like math. it does yeah. sound like math you should have a point by system with a standard array yeah well, really, any choose. point by system yeah. has, a st you know, like you. Right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> because I think I think I've seen it before. And I think it's it's one thing that is a fairly big flaw is that sometimes you got to you have a person who gets lucky and they roll a 12 and they want to be a noble all the way through. And it's just if social status is the only thing they're really rolling for their things, they're going to be perfect. Just like yeah. real life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 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 in my games i don't want that so much like I, I if you if you get your i'm I'm okay with you having the option to start with your social status at 12 but i want everything else to be kind of low because you have to really mm -hmm. yeah she's the system a little bit to get that yeah that's fair as opposed to as opposed to like you know it's theoretically possible to have 12 11 10 seven eight four you know and like and i could see that uh, being okay. frustrating be considering that everything else gets rolled randomly that yeah. you know whether or not you can get into any of these careers is an intellect yeah. role or whatever so if yeah. you are kind of screwed from the start that mm -hmm. yeah that could just be like ryan um mm -hmm. over there with his yeah. his low rolls just, just failing every career right yeah. yeah that could be really frustrating from the beginning and so it's it feels a lot less random when that first one is like you're already behind from the beginning yeah mm -hmm. i think i don't know i could see the randomness of it and the fact that you can't really know what you're getting at the beginning being a flaw right but also that's like the entire system so <laughs> right yeah you know i hesitate yeah. to say yeah. That's a flaw it, it, of the like, system because that's the way it's designed. So really exactly. at that point it's just yeah. is this what you want? No. This maybe isn't right. the game for you. That's fine. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Don't yeah. play it's, it then. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go go play something else. <laughs> right? Go play, I don't know. Go go play your D and D. Yeah. Your D and D or your I, I don't know, I was gonna name another game and then I that's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I'll edit this out, I'll make myself sound smart, don't worry about it. That's good, good. Editor James, cut that. There you go. <laughs> Another one for the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really seem like there is any sort of character types. So when we talk about balancing, it, it almost seems like everybody's kind of on the same level. Or are they? Because those rules are dumb. Oh, right. It's all, I mean, you start off random from everything. 
Yeah, I mean, so, like, really, the only balance then is that we both started with a character sheet and a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like, the only balance is that we're all playing this game. <laughs> we I, all I, showed up. <laughs> I, I think the there are, there are several things in there that are meant to try to help balance it by the end. You know, the, the thing we did, the round robin picking skills, yeah. specifically picking skills for the type of game that the characters are going to be in. I think that is meant to help balance it at the end of the day. It, it's not perfect. The, there's, the game definitely doesn't seem like it was made specifically to be the most balanced thing in the world. Mm. But uh, it also kind of depends on the referee, their planning, their ability to g- go with it. Mm. You know, with our group, my character is the only one who has any sort of combat. If the referee was yeah. to come in and say, all right, guys, you guys are going into this thing and it's you're attacking a a group of mercenaries. Yeah. Okay, Bye, cool. you two. I'll science at I them. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one who might make it out of this alive. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, or on the other side of that coin, you've got somebody that maybe they want to put all of their stuff into combat, and then the, the referee is running a completely diplomatic game. Right, right. Now, and that's, now what are you going to do? Yeah, and that's kind of where you need to more or less communicate pretty early on, you know. If everyone wants to play a military game, cool. Let's make sure everyone knows ahead of time. Yeah. Right. Well, because there are lots of points where you're picking those skills, though. Oh, so yeah. yeah. It, even with the random rolls, there are a few times where you kind of just get whatever you roll. But you are right. most of the time with the skills picking from a few options. So mm-hmm. you're still kind of, as long as you know ahead of time. Even kind of based on the careers you pick. Yeah. You know, if... If mm-hmm. if if we were if we were going to be doing a, a combat based thing, we'd probably be looking more at the military careers. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, we wouldn't you don't, have you picked don't make scholars a, and exactly you don't make a exactly. you don't pick a scholar as your as your career. Yeah. yeah. Well, plus when you make those connections, you can pick any skill. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you can try to balance yourself to what you're doing, no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think it's. It's balanced in some ways and not in others. And most of the ways that it's not yeah. balanced are just the pure randomness of it. it yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. From that very first roll, it's, yeah, I think you're right. The more I think about it, the more I think that like a point buyer, a standard array would really fix a lot of those issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call us, Mongoose. We will, we have opinions. <laughs> so when you are creating NPCs for this game, because this is a game mm-hmm. you've run before. Yeah. Please tell me that you don't have to do all of that for NPCs. No. Okay. No. (laughs) Generally, the advice the book gives is, you know, what is this NPC going to be used for? Well, if this NPC is, you know, a mercenary that you're fighting, here's how how powerful you want him to be. Give him a couple ranks, maybe in this skill. Give him some in this skill. None of the other. He probably has ranks in other skills, but they don't matter. So just focus on the things that are going to matter. The things that are actually going to come up in play. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It it doesn't matter if this mercenary has science archaeology, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that, that Maybe they do. Maybe that's something they learned early on, but who he cares? He went to university mm-hmm. and he had yeah. a best friend. How dare exactly. you? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this, yeah. this mercenary was a person. Yeah. And so it, it's just kind of focus on the things that are important for that person as a part of the story. Yeah, that's good, because otherwise it could be, whew, yeah. no, okay. Yeah, very overwhelming. Yeah. It was like, sorry, guys, you're just going to fight the same NPC over and over again. Yeah. And just like, now we're on to Fred number yeah. 47. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> totally you guys are assaulting a cloning facility? <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. That's amazing. All right. Uh, on to one of my favorite questions. Uh, let's go ahead and discuss the group's cohesion. Uh, how does our group, do we think, uh, currently gel? mechanically with the system and would we fare well in a typical session in the system i mean i i think the group gels really well i think you know that's part of the how the system works is we had to figure out how we work together yeah mm-hmm. i think so narratively just, we're we're on point yeah yeah and and even even in our design we kind of were looking at it as you know oh you're doing astrogation i've got piloting so let's you know mm-hmm. that yeah that will work with how we our characters narratively work together, and it also works mechanically. Yep, and I, I believe we have two medics. Yep, 
Um, I know I've got medic, and uh, I thought Amelia took. I do. Yeah, Amelia's. Yeah. I have a yeah, rank. Yep, character has medic too. Mm-hmm. Um, two pilots, two astrogators, mm-hmm. and two singers. So you know yeah. we got our bases. <laughs> yeah, covered. that's all you need. Yeah. Is a couple pilots, a couple of singers, and you're <laughs> good to go. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. you got a game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, between the group, I think we all have some level of usefulness. Yeah. For yeah. whatever it is we're gonna do. Yeah. And it does feel like we would probably be sticking to a, a less combat heavy right. sort of game, yeah. uh, either yeah. some intrigue or uh, just trying to get our finances in order. Yeah. <laughs> and well, and and so in the game, there's you know there are tables for even if you're doing trading and you're traveling, you know, random yeah. things happen here. Maybe somebody s- snuck aboard your ship or you Col- know color this- me very surprised that random events happen you got yeah. cholera yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so so it's it, there's there's still like even even a game about just trading there are there can be action there can be things like that mm-hmm. and then your response to the action depends it, on yeah. how you want to uh, take care of it yeah and how cruel your uh, referee is <laughs> yep yeah i <laughs> How cruel can you be as a referee? I mean, like, do you? They set the the difficulty levels for things, right? Yeah. Okay. So, it, you know, I mean, the, again, this game is very, very much a reflection of the mid to late seventies that it grew out of. You can be so cruel that why? Why would anybody even play with you? Yeah. Like yeah. you could be there. I mean, it, you've got full control yeah over pretty much everything aside from the player's actions right yeah 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 so the referee could just first session oh pirates are attacking our ship guys okay yeah and unless i can roll well enough in piloting to get away if they board us all right i guess we're done with these characters yep. but but at that point why are you even playing the game well, right eh, you know i mean so <laughs> I, I think though like even D D has like challenge ratings like suggested right, right, things yeah. so does this have some of that because there's not really a whole lot of a setting here either like if you're making up your own planets and you're making up your own mm-hmm. situations and like if you can determine the tech level of something and how rare things are and like my goodness you could really mess somebody's life up yeah. mm-hmm. so so basically in the book there's a there's a section on kind of how to build npcs that might be an issue and it, it really only comes down to about uh, four four categories. You, got, you know, green, average, experienced, and elite. Okay. And and there's, okay. but there's nothing to really tell me. Like if I'm running this game for our group, there's nothing on here that tells me this is how to know if your group is green versus average. So oh. you kind of have to know the system a little bit. Just kind of a gut check. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, there's so nothing that, in there to say like, hey, you should throw. You know, it should have, like, right. this level of skills if your players are at whatever. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Or you have this many people. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you could just really do a lot of damage. So, if you want to be the worst... Yeah, yeah exactly. This if, might be if the you're game looking, for you. If you're looking to run a game and you just hate your players... <laughs> you don't even want to have friends can, anymore and are just really taking yeah. up a lot of your time. Especially because, like, if... if if they come into this and they get emotionally attached to the character because they built all that backstory, man, they're going to hate you if you just mess them up right away. How do you mm-hmm. get emotionally attached to these characters, though? Like, that's the thing is, like, I mean, I I guess you can, like, if you make enough connections and stuff, but I right, feel like right. maybe... Well, I, I, think, I think one part of it is you kind of have to, after you do the events, start to build that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, start to actually look at it as like, well... Zach, you know, right out of high school, he he got in with the wrong crowd. And, you know, for several years, he was just, like, trying to impress them and everything. And then he, you know, a while later, when that job goes wrong, he realizes that these guys don't have his back, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, yeah. if you yeah. start building that story, I think it helps you really attach to that character. And I think yeah, some of that... it probably fills out, like, more as you do a couple more rounds, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... I want to talk about the system as a whole and do you, how you feel like it plays and how it lends itself to character development, not necessarily like advancing in level, but right. how you kind of grow as a person. 
We talked a little yeah. bit earlier about how skills work, yeah. and I, I like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as far as character development, I think you do your your hand is forced in doing some character development before mm-hmm. the game starts with this mm-hmm. more so than other games. Well, I and, mine did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you already have to be in the mindset of developing a character when before the first actual session happens. Yeah. Um, and, and then it comes down to, I think in this game, it's a lot more role playing for, for the development. It's the way the system works, the way the rules work. Um, there is a lot of downtime where you can role play. You don't have to, but mm-hmm. you know, any, any trip from one system to another where you're jumping yeah, is going to be a week. week. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. week of you guys, of us three just hanging out in our ship. Yeah. Doing whatever. And you can abstract it. You can just be like, all right, you got to spend a week. We're here now. Or yeah. or you can kind of sit down more and, you know, well, what are you guys talking about? What are you guys doing? Well, and that's kind of interesting because uh, one of my favorite podcasts, uh, actual play podcasts out there, the Redemption Podcast. Yep. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of episodes where it's they're traveling between star systems. Yeah. Yeah. And they're on downtime on the ship, and they have these amazing character interaction moments. Those are my favorite episodes of campaign, the bottle episodes, where the they're bottle, just yeah. like on the where they're doing their mission debriefs, like yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's and that's that's available in this as well. It's it, it kind of comes down to it's not enforced by the rules that you have to have those sessions. Yeah, but it's supported by the rules. That's very cool. Yeah, I like that. That there's like time yeah built in for that and and that will also when we get to the talk about advancement if we're going to talk about that more that can tie in there as well right well let's talk about it right now Uh yeah let's go ahead and get into our character advancement segment and take it up a level take it up a level take it up a level so now finally we're going to talk about how advancement and leveling up works which apparently doesn't in this system (laughs) there's no experience (laughs) points none Again, why am I here? <laughs> I'm just here for I the points. I want those numbers. The sweet, sweet I gotta put XP. those numbers. Just, just get those numbers up. <laughs> yeah. Sweet games. Give me more numbers so I can write bigger numbers on my sheet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so ultimately with advancement, you have two main things you're looking at. You're raising your skill by training. And to do that takes a number of weeks. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it's a number of weeks based on what you currently have in that skill. And it doesn't okay. have to be it doesn't have to be consecutive. Like you can have a break in between. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I see there's a spot on the character sheet that says how many weeks you have out of however many weeks it takes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So it you put down on there, you put down what skill it is. And if it's if you need three weeks and train to train pilot, after the first week you would put one. And once you get it up to three, there's a roll. You still have to roll to see if your training was successful of in course. improving you. Of course, of why course. wouldn't you? Yeah. And if it does, <laughs> if it does, you have increased that skill by one, and you can start training something else. Oh, man. And and so that's that's one of the options for those week-long trips. Mm-hmm. But But again, you can still include both of those. You can have, you know, my character is mostly practicing on flight simulators, but we have a scene where we're at dinner together. Yeah, because you know. you're not doing that 24-7. Exactly, yeah. And, and like, when you're in the middle of a jump, you don't really need to be in the cockpit the whole time. So it's just kind of, mm-hmm. do your thing. So in a typical so session, like, are you just doing kind of, like, one job? Or are you, I mean, how does the timing on that, I mean, I'm sure it depends on the group and the situation. And yeah. How much role-playing you do. Right. The last session that I ran, the entire session... Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was it was two sessions, and the both sessions that the entire story took place in the span of one jump. Oh, it actually took place in the middle of the jump because it mm-hmm. was uh it was that they were transporting people, and there was an attempted hijacking while they were doing that. Oh. And and when you're when you're in a a jump, you can't get out of it. You're you're just there. So oh, interesting. Yeah. Just stuck in your jump tunnel. Pretty much, yeah. Huh. It's. I, I think it's like uh, you surround yourself with. It's like I don't think it's anti gravity, but it's it, it's something like some yeah, science. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Warp bubble sort of thing, <laughs> like a like a wormhole or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But so, but so, yeah. It it, it kind of all depends on what what the group and the referee want to do. You know, it it can be one session is 
a single mission that's a jump there and a jump back. It could be a session is several jumps, or it could be a session is not even a jump. Interesting. You can do it. You can do entire sessions in in a city. You know, mm-hmm. doing things there. Well, it sounds like if you get in too much debt, you might lose your ship, and then you have no choice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of games lay out. And again, because this one doesn't use XP, it's not quite the same, but a lot of games sort of lay out like the expected advancement based on how much time you're playing and, you know, like this many XP per hour of play. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I mean, that's always a rough estimate based on what you're like. If you're if your players are spending the whole time shopping, like you're not going to give them as much XP unless you're a really good GM and you know that that's the point of role playing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you know that all you're really supposed to be doing when you're sitting on that table is discussing the color of the kimono that you want. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I have so many pinned. It's going to be great. Um, (laughs) 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 Hey, look, in our last game of Spire, we went like thrift shopping so that we could look like the most hipster drow ever. It was very good perfect exactly that's why you play but because there's no like xp to time ratio in this like is it it's just really like wildly open how much you advance yeah yeah Hmm. pretty much especially because you know if if, if i'm focused on trying to get my piloting up that's going to take several weeks if you're focused on trying to get a skill from zero to one that might I, i think it takes one week you know, so if you you could do three skills from zero to one, maybe mm-hmm. in the time. I, I, again, I don't remember the exact amounts, but in the time it takes me to do one, though, you could do several up. A step. Do you do you have to do a skill from nothing to zero, or is uh, it automatically nothing to one? I do believe you have to go from nothing to zero. That makes That's, sense. It's 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 the the last time that I ran it that we weren't doing advancement because things interrupted so i it's been a little while since i've yeah. done too much you don't have this book it. memorized all i'm sorry i'm sorry and... <laughs> it's okay i mean we'll allow it yeah, yeah it makes sense because you you if you don't have anything even a zero in a skill you get minus three unless exactly. you've got the jack of all trades Amelia. now now if i was a referee i would say if you had jack of all trades at three then you're automatically zero and everything i i mean i i wouldn't be against that ruling i don't think that's how the, the, the i know yeah yeah that's <laughs> rules I, I have i would be amazed to see somebody get jack of all trades to three it's yeah. it's pretty rare to to get that yeah because you don't really get that one from Right, Anything. and you you explicitly can, can can't you... get it for connections. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That answers my question. Yeah, and it was, I mean, it's, you have to, like, roll it in the table. And, uh-huh. yeah. Exactly. Can you increase it? Like, can you practice Jack of All Trades? Uh, I'm not actually sure. I would oh, have to look that up. That's a good question. Maybe. I, like, you just watched I would a have lot to look of Discovery Channel while you were in. I, I just, <laughs> I just want to study everything yeah. look i fell down a wikipedia <laughs> my, hole <laughs> my my gut says no but i i, I can't I, yeah yeah it, yeah it doesn't make sense narratively exactly to just i'm gonna practice everything during this like five week period and then i have to roll against everything to see yeah. if i can do everything better yeah and the other thing though with with character advancement is skills are not the only thing on your sheet. You also have the the characteristics. Mm-hmm. The only reliable way to raise those is augmentations, which are real expensive. So, got to get money. Sense. It all comes back to money in this it game. It all comes back to money. Okay. Or if you want a better ship, which is not a bad move, or better equipment. Equipment mm-hmm. matters. Yeah. All of that comes down to money. Yep. Well, it makes sense if you get a better ship that has more cargo room, and if you're running more cargo, then you can add more things to your spreadsheet, and then... And also, bigger ships, there are crew requirements for things, and you have to start worrying about payments for NPCs. you got to pay NPCs. Uh, And now you've got a whole new spreadsheet, like, just for the NPCs and how much you're paying them. there, There is a separate, basically a character sheet for your ship that includes a lot of things. Although it, now now you can actually have a simulation of uh, hiring your crew as like you're the HR department. Yep. 
you get you get to negotiate their salary. Yeah. Why? Wow. <laughs> that, that sounds like so much garbage. Yeah, doesn't that fa- sound fun, Amelia? <laughs> I, you know what, though? Like, with the right group, it could be. Like, yeah, with the right, really like, if be. you were playing with the right group of people. Yeah. I feel like this would be, like, not bad as, like, a play-by-post kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Where you have, like, 85 Slack channels that you can keep track of this stuff in. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, I, I mean, I just, I, trying to imagine, like, sitting around a table, mathing all of this out just feels kind right. of, right. Eh. It's, but, it's. I so I've never done a long campaign of it. I've normally done, you know, build characters maybe 3 or 4 sessions at most. Mm-hmm. I feel like for a long campaign there's a ton of stuff that people have to do when you're not sitting at the table, you know, you you've got somebody whoever's in charge of the the ship and maintenance might be on an off day, just going through the math of how much is it going to cost to do all of this, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. keeping track of all of that inventory stuff is a is a between-session yeah. activity. Yeah. Because, yeah. man, scheduling's hard enough without taking an hour to figure out how much fuel costs. Yeah. Is there a skill for, like, mathing stuff as characters? Um, I think that's just being smart. <laughs> I mean, like, broker might might work broker i think is yeah. a lot of the trade stuff that makes sense yeah yeah that'd probably be the most yeah because I'm, I'm trying to think of like okay if a player is really good with spreadsheets and stuff but their character is dumb as rocks you know they would have to almost kind of be like doing these calculations for the the smarter characters in the group that have these skills yeah i mean there's also in in universe you can always just assume computers things like that you know oh yeah 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 that's the, true. The, the ship has a computer you can probably factor it in and have it tell you oh you owe this much this month mm-hmm. yay thanks computer yeah yeah I, you, the, you can hand wave yeah. most things yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the, the, future. the future the bank the bank emails you which is not exactly how it works in traveler but i'm sorry do they not have email do they still use faxes in bing faster than light communication doesn't exist in traveler did you say Bing? Bing. Oh, so yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tanner's character in our our last Shadow of the Cabal campaign was very tech illiterate and often requested to to Bing things. Oh, that's amazing. And to fax things to his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Checking out my Zoom. Uh, wow. <laughs> so wow. wait, faster than light communicate? Well, I'm sorry. Are there space carrier pigeons? I have questions. Uh, so <laughs> that is basically what Zach did for the last term. That's what a courier is. They take letters. Oh my god! What kind of that is also dumb game is this? That <laughs> that is also a valid cargo type for when you're playing the game. Wow! Basically, letters or I, I mean, they're not paper letters. They're you know digital things. But right, because you can't just send communication through like some faster than light waves. The fastest way to get from one system to another with a message is literally on a ship with a jump drive. Okay. That makes cool. sense. Cool. We can travel faster than the speed of light, but we can't. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. You it. can't even figure out quantum communication. Come on. I know. I know. How stupid just are they? Just entangle some stuff. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Just t- Duh. <laughs> just <laughs> entangle some stuff. Good. That's Great. science. That's just I don't know, science. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, okay great <laughs> <laughs> so do you think it would be beneficial then to have character advancement in mind during character creation no I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> you can't, there's you can't only... even have character creation in mind during character creation <laughs> <laughs> there's there's only one way that i can think of having character advancement in mind during character creation and that okay. is putting high high values in your intellect and education because those two limit the total number of skill points you can have that makes sense so that is the about the only way you could actually factor in advancement in character creation but that that's I'm aware a good of. thing to know though right up front yeah to that, say that is sure. a very yeah, good call yeah. out yeah but i i i think it doesn't you know if if we're making these characters and we're we already know it's going to be three sessions who cares we don't need to know that yeah if we're making these characters and it's hey guys i'm gonna run a long running campaign with you then i owe it to you to tell you that right yeah 
Yeah, that makes sense. Although, I mean, it's interesting, too, because that's, like, the first thing that you pick before you know anything about what you're going to end up doing, too. Yeah. So, like... I wanted to pick my pick my intellect as a higher one because I was going to make a nerd because it's what I do. Mm-hmm. That's, what you, that's right. what you are. It is. Mm-hmm. But that's not what I ended up with anyway. So, like, I feel like those things did not matter at all. Like, where I for, put r- those for right off the bat, yeah. points. I, but I don't know. I, like, I mean, maybe because I did Drifter and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But, like, I don't yeah. feel that the fact that my endurance was particularly low really mattered. Well, well that's because you, you succeeded at everything. Yeah. You <laughs> say that with such disdain. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it definitely can matter. I mean, you a plus one or a minus one could be a, a pretty big difference in, in some of these roles. I suppose. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, I guess just because it didn't for our three terms apiece. Yeah. And, like, the terms that I picked were all things that were pretty kind of based on things I was good at. Yeah, that's yeah. For the most part. So, like... I, I, I suppose I, you if your if your points are all in like strength right. and endurance, you're not going to go for an entertainer career. Yeah. yeah, like I think you might have been the only one who did something that had a a role with a distinctly negative anywhere in there. Like as a, I think it was a survival or an advancement role. Mm. I think I think I had one too. Yeah. Okay, and that's you know if 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 you're trying to tease the system. You can look at that and say, "Oh, my character has a plus in this and a plus in this, and that has an advancement mm-hmm. of this." And you know, yeah. if you, you roll can... well enough on those first it, six steps, that's that's true as well. Yeah, oh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I w- I was satisfied. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was still fun. Like, I don't yeah. know, I, I don't know how attached I would be to this character playing, but I always mm-hmm. kind of feel that way in games that like it takes me a little bit to get a feel for yeah who yeah. the character is. So I I actually throughout this conversation have decided that I would be very attached to this character because I'm kind of invested in building them back up. Oh, you're playing yeah. a Ryan character. I know. <laughs> what happened? The Ryan has become the Ryan. <laughs> ah. And the circle is complete. <laughs> Wait, if, if he's becoming me now too, am I just character creation cast at this point? No, everyone is me because everyone. you are me. And if that Ryan is you, then everyone is me and I am everyone. That's oh, just this, math. This is weird. That's just I'm, science. I'm, I don't like this. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> this is my show now. <laughs> I want off Mr. Bones' wild ride. <laughs> well, good news. We've reached the end of our episode. <laughs> what a great segue. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, do you have any last any last points that you want to make about this game before we... <laughs> no, I think, I think we've got I think we've pretty enough. well covered. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think you've bashed it enough yes. for me. Okay. <laughs> it, it I don't hurts. mean to. No, like, it's, I mean, it was super interesting. I, I would have to play oh, yeah. it out to, like, yeah. but it's very yeah. different from anything that we've done before on this show or certainly anything oh, that yeah. I've played. Like, it was cool. It it reminds me of those micromanaging games, um, like uh, Master of Orion or Civilization, mm-hmm. things like that, where you have to nitpick all the little details. Yeah. And stuff. That's that kind of the feel I'm getting that we might get from actually playing the game. Yeah. But it, yeah, it, I, I, yeah. It's interesting. And, and and it's one of those things where that is one of the main ways to play it. Or you can play it, you know, kind of not focus on that stuff so much and just play it as more of a traditional space RPG if you yeah. want. But I don't so, I don't think it's as good for that. I think there are throughout the debt. Yeah, I think there are probably better games if that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Like, it feels... You can play the game without those things, but it feels like it just wouldn't be as rich. Yeah. It'd be kind of flat. The world building seems pretty cool, though. Yeah, that's a thing that we really didn't get to look into much, but there's a lot of tools in there for kind of creating Uh the world that seemed really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. We'll put a link to the planet thingy in in our show notes too, because that was fun to just like refresh <laughs> just over and over again. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you know if if you're like at work and you just want a screen you can refresh over and over. Yeah, just have, keep I got a site it. for you. Look at random worlds and be like, oh, that's an interesting world. Yeah, <laughs> we could go there and do a thing. Yeah, we could do a science. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming and talking about this game with us, for suggesting this weird game. 
<laughs> do you want to remind everybody where they can find you and what you are up to? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter as the Prime Sauce, and I am on the podcast Shadow of the Cabal, which is an actual play podcast focusing on high drama, usually Legend of the Five Rings, but sometimes in hiatuses on other games. Yes, we branch out. Every so often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have now fulfilled our obligation to mention Shadow of the Cabal in this episode, along yep, with every other go. episode. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, when you have me as the guest, you don't need to worry too much, too much about that obligation. That's true. That's true. Exactly. You just need Tanner to let me out of the basement, man. <laughs> I know. It's cold down here. <laughs> well, thank you, Ryan, for sitting down with us. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the product can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation, so go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. I can I can close time.gov. <laughs> you can close time.gov. Yep. Wrong show. Yeah, don't, because don't need it. Nope. We don't need it. Okay. And then we're, a we're reminder pro- that pro- Ryan doesn't like swearing. So even though I said I was a <laughs> oh, language in professional. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to I'll try to keep it under control. Thank you. Yes, please. You're first. No, you're orange. No. Because remember we he switched it. it. Oh God, no! I can't do this. The colors, the colors are, the colors are sacred, and you all f- language with the colors. So many colors. <laughs> all language with the colors. Fine. Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. I know it's fine. No, it's too late now. <laughs> We're starting. Okay. Okay. You, you're orange in part one. Welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> All language. Welcome to this all language f-ing show. Okay. Game face. <laughs> Gentle spirit. Okay. <laughs> Get all the way. Are we all good? Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. I think we're good. Ryan, are you are you good? I don't know how we're gonna get through this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Deep breaths. Well, that's a good way for me there. Corebook when? Corebook when? <laughs> any day now. Any minute now. I, I live so close to their, their headquarters. I can just go pick it up. Break into the Fantasy Flight headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. Get me my book. Ah, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. We don't we don't concone that sort of <laughs> all right, <laughs> stuff so here at Character Creation Game. Right. Offline. Ryan, go get me that book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's a bug in here. Oh, no. I know. It's really bugging me. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. Yay, we did it. Stop uh, record. That's three episodes. Stop recording. I can't get to my audacity. Stop. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. 
Show blurb. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role-playing games. Except the games are terrible, and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which silver hawk was the best. It was Hot Wing, don't even add us. Find their shows at SystemMasteryPodcast.com or OneShotPodcast.com. Finally.